Yes, it was the highest rating Friday night game ever for good reason. Tough, uncompromising, physical, plenty of skill in and amongst all of it, but definitely the highlight, or you could say the low light, was the competition of the front rowers going toe to toe. I loved it. Jared Weirah Hargreaves getting the better. I believe, over Nelson. You wrote a story about Big mm. Nelson today in the paper. What was your take on it, Buzz? Uh, I loved the game for starters. The intensity was just sensational and it was more like an origin game than just a Friday night club match. It was just phenomenal power and force. The, the collisions were just extraordinary. Having said that, there was some instances in that game that did disappoint me and I wrote about it this morning. And um, I'll start with Nelson as safe as Solomona and it's not personal, but I think he needs to change the way he plays the game. I think there were far too many cheap shots in his um, in his makeup. Um, the Suwali incident, where he came down with his elbow, I think that could potentially break a player's jaw. There's the photo there. Um, there was another one where he need Joey Manu. And there, look, there are other instances through the game, but I'm not necessarily blaming the player for doing what he's doing, getting away with it. I'm blaming a really soft NRL judiciary. This guy's had 10 charges he's pleaded guilty to in the last three years. 10 charges. It, it, here's his rap sheet, Buzz. Let's take a look at it. It's one hell of a rap sheet, that's for sure, for Big Nelson. But there's been... That's the first weeks. page. Yeah, well, that's the first <laughs> page. OK. So 10 guilty charges and four weeks of suspensions. There's the page two there, Buzz. Yeah, look, I spoke to Martin Lang about this yesterday and he's one of the most respected ex-players going around. He's done a lot of study at university about contact sport, brain injuries, etc. And he was the one who, when I read his tweet, put me up to writing the column because he said the deterrence for this sort of football have to be, or football or thuggery or cheap shot or whatever you want to call it, have to be far more severe than what the NRL are dishing out. Yeah, well, the, the judiciary is gutless, Buzz. The, uh, the, the Bash Review panel. He's had 17 charges, Asafa Solomona. Mm. He's pleaded guilty to 16 of them over his career. He's had seven weeks suspension. This year he's had five charges. He's pleaded guilty to all five, hasn't missed a game. And been hit with twelve thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, but worth of the, the point the point is missing games is is what costs you. We have got this system now where we have these acceptable penalties, eleven hundred dollars, thirteen fifty. That sort of money for a guy earning six hundred and fifty thousand dollars is stuff. You, you know, he'll lose that down the back of his lounge. Mm. The, the fact is, it's not a big enough deterrent, and the NRL carries on with all this rubbish about protecting the player, and every game now is held up with all these HIAs we have to sit through because we care so much about the brain, yet we do nothing to actually, nothing to actually discourage the other side of it, which is the intent to actually cause it. Mm. Once it's happened, get him off, get him fixed up, let's have a look at him. But there's not enough deterrent to say, guys, Get it out of your game. The fact that Sofa Solomon has been up five times this year with charges and has not missed a game mm. but pled guilty to all five. So should he, should he have been suspended for this? Well, he's got form like this, OK? He's got he form. He knocked a bloke's teeth out Wade two Egan's weeks ago. Teeth, Wade Egan had to go to the dentist and get his two, two teeth fixed after a very similar incident to that. And every time he sails, just close to win. And all these people say it's an accident. It, it happens too frequently to be an accident every time. It happens too frequently. And he always just sails just this side of a grade two charge, which would cost him games. Well, there's the Wade Egan incident there. There's two teeth knocked out. Wade Egan thought he had a broken jaw in that incident. The week earlier against South Sydney, he elbows Cameron Murray, and he also collects him with a high shot. Two separate incidents. Gets hit with $6,000 worth of fines. But, Braith, you'd remember from when you were playing... Spending time on the sidelines is the strongest deterrent for players, mm. especially at this time of year. If Melbourne had lost Nelson, leading into this massive yeah. game against Parramatta Thursday night, there's no so doubt it stamps yeah. a message. Guys, you know the most important thing in handing out punishment at the judicial match review is priors. And that's a fact in any court case, in crime, anything. If you're a repeat offender and if... Yeah, but you're talking about footy, not... No, no, well, I am talking about footy, right? And as Candy said, he's had 18 charges he's pleaded guilty to, right? Mm. Over Since his 16. career started, in five, or 16 and 5 this year. What I'm saying is, if they'd pulled him up at the beginning of the year with the first one saying, 
you're going to have a two-week holiday because you've got a horrible list of priors. I'm not sure he would continue to play in the manner in which he is. So, again, I'm not blaming Nelson the safer Solomona. You're as much as I'd like to get the crap out of his game, if the rules were tougher, You're he would not on, be doing this. You're spot on. Look, the fact is, there's nothing that's happened so far to make anyone from Melbourne go to a safer Solomona <clears> and say, mate, get rid of it. Because it's not costing them games. He's still playing every mm. weekend, so there's nothing to make them say, mate, get it out of your game. If he starts missing games, then they will. Secondly, the fact that he's still going there and, and getting away with this, a week ago we had James Tarmo go to, to the judiciary and part mm. of his defence was he was a good character, so the judiciary sat there and said, you know what, we'll take your character into account here and we'll take it and we'll downgrade mm. it so you can only miss one game rather than two. Yet this guy's been up five times this year. He's been up 17 times in his career for careless eye tackles, mm. dangerous contact. All grade ones, seven games. S pleaded guilty in six of the, 16 of those 17, and yet his character is not taken into account. Because under the, the judicial yeah. system, it's not supposed to be. I it's it's I just a dog's breakfast, what's going well, on I had a few people reach out to me today about... JWH, he's had seven fines in a row. He hasn't been charged That's fair either. Is, what's the difference well, the between Jared? Would, the only point I would make with Jared is you often see Jared sent to the sin bin. He was sin binned yeah. in this game. And what led to Jared being sin binned was actually Nelson initially running in full noise and leading with his head. Did he deserve yeah. to be sin binned here? Well, what I, was I, our I take thought. On this? Oh, well, I think there's a little headbutt that goes in at the yeah, end. There, there was by well, that oh. stage it was fizzing that much yeah. on the edge. This game that the referee needed to do something. So if it was fizzing, then why did he get ten? And well, Nelson that's didn't? that's the point, and that's why people look. We all love the way the mm. physicality that Nelson and Jared bring to the game. But to Buzz's point from this morning, I, I think it is fair. What would you call Nelson, oh, okay. the biggest cheap shop merchant in the game? And it's it's not because he's the only bloke who's doing it, but he's getting away with it. Mm. Jared doesn't get away with it. He's been sin on numerous occasions this year. With, he gets away with a bit, Jared. But look, the fact, that, see, the other part to it, if you want to really peel it all back, is that natural justice has gone out of the game. So if you cheap shot a bloke, in the old days you could square up with him. Okay, you can't do that anymore because of the way we adjudicate the game, the way we, how closely we watch the game, the fact that you can be retroactively uh, cited and suspended and all the rest of it. You can't do that. So they've got to get rid of it at the front end. If you can't, if you can't deal with it that way, mm. you've got to get it the other way. And the only way you can get it out of the game is to suspend people. Mm. And, 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 the, and the match review committee has got to start showing some guts mm. and actually start suspending people grade two and grade three charges. I don't know if they know what they're there. I don't even know if they're that, they know they're in the rule book, the grade two and grade three charges, because yeah. they never seemingly <coughs> charge anyone with grade two or three. You know, in the off grade one. You know, in the off season, they, they did a review of the judiciary and the match review committee. But what the review did was actually soften the penalties for this yes. season. So I checked with the NRL today and I asked them the question, if this same incident, same grading had happened last year, what would the app, would it still be a fine? Mm. They came back and said, no, it would be a week's suspension mm. plus two weeks if he went and fought it. I was about to so say, Buzz, with loading, which he would have had. Three mm. lots of loading. Yep. If Buzz, you look at all of Nelson's mm. incidents this season on the field, right, and then we consider... Dale Finucane got three weeks for his shot on Stephen Crichton. Mm. Pat Carrigan got four weeks. He hasn't done a week. Like, mm. he, he should be going out and buying a power. Yeah, but but how, how are they feeling in Melbourne about this? Oh, they're not, they're not happy with the column I wrote. And I've spoken to a couple of officials from the club mm. today. And look, I spoke to Craig Bellum and I spoke to Matt Tripp. And uh, th there was a query why I singled out um, um, Nelson, a safe Solomon, when there are other incidents we're going to talk mm. about, like Cameron's elbow, and there was the. Um, Kafusi uh, hip drop, hip drop hip tackle, drop. Yep. Um, which, which we'll talk about in a minute. Look, they're not happy about the coverage, mm. but look, I pointed out, and you guys often give it to me. I'm like a been a voice piece for that football club. I've defended their wrestling mm. for many, many years, only because every club wrestles. They do it very well. You're a good bloke. Uh, no, no, I'm, I, I really <laughs> admire Melbourne Storm. <laughs> so I reckon so they're the best football club in the country. Their record proves that success-wise. Craig Bellamy is a great, great football coach. But on this occasion, yeah. they've got to accept responsibility mm. for their players' actions, mm. and so does the NRL of what we've been talking about. I think they want to protect him too because 
you know, I think in the past Nelson has been a little bit, he's had a few things going on and thought about leaving the game. So there's a bit going on yeah, there with yeah, Nelson. So, But if they want to protect him, get the rubbish out of his game. No, I agree. Start, that's no, where it starts. I'm not defending yeah, Nelson yeah, by yeah, any means. And, and you know, I'm just saying. But is that his, that's the NRL's job. Well, well, that's the NRL's job. As, as for Melbourne, I, I'm... I'm with you, but I, I have admired Melbourne. I've been critical of Melbourne and the wrestling and, and these type of incidents that get introduced in the game, and I'm not going to back down from that. But the, the fact is, they are a team that they do these sorts of things, and then they, they've begun, they begin the quiet campaign of the phone calls and the, can you do this and look after that, and, and they raise all these little issues to try and quieten the noise. The way Melbourne, if you're fair income, Go out there and say to Nelson, mate, just cut it out of your game. And they won't do it. They haven't done it. They've been doing it all year. I hopped into them early in the year. We had a blue about it earlier in the year over ex exactly that type of incident. And he got away with it then, and it's a rubbish act back then, and no one has come in to try and fix it up. And the match review committee, they are gutless. They are, they are the problem. They went through a big review over the summer to try and fix it all, but you know what they couldn't fix? The people that are in there working it. And until they get rid of them, the system wasn't broke. The people in the system were broke. And they still haven't figured out because they, they reverse engineer everything. They just Everything's a grade one charge now because they want all the stars on the weekend. Let's remember at the start of the year, they reduced, as part of the review, they reduced crushes and shoulder charges now to a grade one is a fine. We've worked for three, four years mm. to get rid of these tackles out of the game. Mm. And at the start of the year, they go and redo it because they want stars mm. on the field. What sort of system do you have stars on the field so you can allow them to get away mm. with that? It, it does not make sense. And it's weak administration from the top down.